Hello! One of the most interesting features of the MeshPad software is the finite element modeling in the early design stage when no CD data is available. In this example, we have the front wheel axle of a motorcycle. In MeshPad, we create complex finite element assemblies from single components. We can import single parts from a CAD program or from the MeshPads library of ready-to-use finite element models. In this model of the front wheel axle of a motorcycle, I will explain the single components by creating an exploded view. We can see here the rim, the bifurcated tubes, the fork ends, the bearings, the spacer sleeves, the washer, and the screw nut, and finally the axle. All these components, with the exception of the rim, are imported from the MeshPads library. So there is no need of importing CAD models or the need is reduced to a minimum. The only input for the creation of this model was a handmade sketch which describes the position of all presented parts. We can see here the axle, the fork ends and the bearings. In mesh parts, the finite element assembly is parametric and configurable. When I select the main assembly, I can see here the equations that describe the behavior of the whole assembly. The only requirement of the design was to use inner bearings and the question was which size these bearings should have. We know the external load, loads that uh, act on the wheel and the task was to compute the loads acting on the bearings. This way we can decide if the bearing has the right size or if we should choose a smaller or bigger bearing. The interesting part is that we are using inner bearings and we need the nonlinear stiffness properties of each analyzed bearing. Normally we must contact the producer and ask for those stiffness curves. So this is rather a very complicated pro uh, process. Fortunately, we have already thousands of inner bearings in our library and all the needed physical data is already there as seen, as seen in this table. Here you can see how the data is stored in the library. In the first column of the table, we have the inner product names and in the next columns, we can see various geometric data and physical data like stiffness data. Also here to see, uh, you can see the mass for each single bearing. The nice thing about this uh, final element assembly in mesh parts is that the whole model adapts to the different bearing type that we use. I will open this assembly of the Excel in order to analyze it better. The first parameter in the assembly equations is the bearing type, which is a string, and this string is exactly as given by INA. MeshPads can import all different bearing properties only by knowing the bearing name, so the whole assembly knows what inner and outer diameter and of course what stiffness this bearing, bearing has. Another interesting feature in mesh, mesh parts is the module design of experiments. 
Here we can define different design factors and vary those factors in predefined steps. The nice thing about it is that we are not limited to numbers. We can also define strings as values. In this case, we are defining the inner bearing types to three strings, as you can see in this table. Now we can change the bearing type and we can see how fast the model design changes accordingly. I will first choose the second bearing type here from a list. You can see now that um, all depending parts are updated automatically. And since we are not using a CAD import and the models are already parametric and predefined in the MeshPass library, the model update is very quick. The same way we can set the third bearing type and again the bearing types will be the, bear, the, the respective bearings will be imported from the mesh parts library and all other parts of the front axle will change automatically. The target of the simulation was the computation of bearing loads. In mesh parts we can solve the model directly from the Explorer tree. We have exported before the tree designs and we can choose from the context menu to, to solve the model. And finally, we evaluate the results. We have computed the results and recorded three videos that I would like to show you. The first video shows the deformation of the whole model. The second video shows the deformation of the axle and finally the last video shows the stresses and deformation of the axle. Okay, that was all. I hope it was interesting to watch and I will see you next time.